Okay, so we've been looking at lines, graphing lines, for quite a while now. Um, and you probably have noticed that each line, there's not much different about them. They, are more, they more or less look like this. And so each line has some important features to it, important sort of fingerprints that make it different from every other line. For example, this line here, we can, fig we, we can see from it how steep it is. Okay, some lines have no slope or steepness, like say y equals 1. We did horizontal and vertical lines. A line going across would have no slope. A line that's uh, vertical, like x equals 2, like this, would have a crazy steep slope. And this uh, s slope is, well, kind of in between. How do you find the slope of this thing? So to find the slope of a line, which is pretty important, first off we have to know in which direction is it leaning in. If it's leaning in this direction here, so it's leaning forward, or leaning to the right, we say it's got a positive slope. Because if you look at the uh, x-axis here, it's leaning towards the positive end here. For example, if, another, if I drew another line this way, this line is leaning in the negative direction. It's leaning in the negative part of the, of the x-axis. We say it has a negative slope, okay? like leaning backwards, leaning to the left. Okay, So if it leans to the right, leans to the positive direction, it's got a positive slope. By how much? Is it, you know, we have to put a number value to the slope. Here's how you do this. If you've got a line and there's no dots on it, what you want to do is make some dots on this line that nicely intersect between um, y values and x values. Nice be intersect, intersect between grid, line <coughs> grid lines. Like right there. The line intersects nicely between the x and the y grid there. Notice right here, that part intersects the 4 right there, but it doesn't hit an x value, a whole number x value, it kind of hits at the halfway point there, so that's not good. But right here it does. You notice that there and there, they intersect nicely, so let's put a dot there. And what we want to do is figure out the slope here, and to figure out the slope of something, it's always the rise over the run. That's how you find the slope of something. So how much it goes up divided by how much it runs to the right. Well, how much does this run to the right? From there, first let's make our triangle. Make it, between the two dots, we make a little triangle. And that little triangle tells us the slope of this line. Okay, so to the right, we moved one spot, right? So the run is 1. How much did it go up? It went up by 1, 2. 2 spots. So we say that it went up 2 and over 1. So we say that our slope then, because it's leaning in the positive direction, our slope then is positive 2. Because 2 divided by 1 is 2. Now the other important thing about a line is where it slices through the y-axis. Okay, lines can go like this, it can go like that, but they always will eventually, if you extend the line long enough, slice through the y-axis. This line slices through the y-axis right there. Now, what you call slicing through the y-axis, it's called the y-intercept. And the y-intercept, where it hits the y-axis, in this case, is to 3 right there. So the y-intercept is 3. On just any old 3, it's not down here negative 3, it's positive 3. So the y-intercept is positive 3. Those two numbers are going to help you write the equation for the line. The slope is positive 2, the y-intercept is negative 3. And that brings us to our topic of the day, which is called graphing lines from an equation. Part 1, y equals mx plus b. Now that you're probably looking at me or thinking about, uh, 
thinking, wow, that sounds pretty clunky and ugly. I don't even know what that means. Relax, I'll, show, I'll explain it to you. Okay. Lines be written in this form. Y equals mx plus b. When you see that, you're probably thinking, what does this m have to do with anything? What does that b have to do with anything? I know. They're weird. But they actually stand for something. This m stands for, uh, it stands for slope. I know it should have an s there for slope, but I don't know why it's got an m there. Maybe someone can Google it up and, and let me know. So that is the slope. This is the y-intercept. That value there is the y-intercept. And so when you know what the slope and y-intercept are, you just substitute them in for this y equals mx plus b, it's like a formula, and you have the equation of the line. Remember the slope of this line that we just figured out? It went up to over 1. It was and it leaned in the positive direction, so it was positive 2 over 1. The y-intercept we said was 3, positive 3. So you just take our formula, y equals mx plus b, and you take, substitute out the m, which means slope, which I know doesn't start with s, but yeah, the whatever, and you put that value into for there. So instead of having the m, we'll have y equals 2 over 1, which is the same thing as po is 2. So we put a 2, leave our x, and then our y-intercept, it slices the y-axis at positive 3. We put positive 3 in for this b. Why they put b? I don't know why, they just... Um, anyways, there's our formula. y equals 2x plus 3. That line is given by this equation, y equals 2x plus 3. Just by looking at the line and the slope and the intercept, we can get the equation. So if some of you are thinking, wow, that's pretty crazy stuff. I don't know why I wrote it again. Um, yeah, because it's going to save you a lot of work. Here is the next line, right here. And you notice that it slices the y-intercept at negative 4. So we can say that the y-intercept here is negative 4. Now let's zoom in to figure out the slope. Zoom in to figure out the slope. Remember what I just said for slope? Find a couple dots that nicely that nicely crisscross the x and y axis. By actually putting a dot at the y-intercept, it's always a good idea. So there's a dot there. Can't put one there. Can't put one there because it doesn't really meet. Ah, it meets nicely right there. Make our little triangle. Remember, the slope is the rise over run. Slope is equal to the rise over the run. The rise over the run. Now, first off, does it, is this a positive slope or a negative slope? It's a positive slope because it leans forward to the right, right here, in the positive direction. If it leaned this way, it would lean into the negative direction. We have a negative slope. We'll come back to that later. So what is the slope here? Well, the rise, it goes up three spots, and it went across one spot. So the slope is 3 over 1 which of course 3 over 1 is the same thing as 3. So the slope is 3. So let me zoom out. And the slope is 3, positive 3. So from those two things, we just bring in our formula, y equals mx plus b. This, remember, stands for the slope. This stands for the y-intercept. We just substitute in. The slope is 3, so we have y equals 3x instead of plus b. Negative 4 will go into its spot. 3x minus 4 is the equation for that line right there. So, we've been going from lines to equations, but you've been getting a lot of work where you've had to go from uh, an equation like this and draw the line. And you had to draw like a table of values and do all this stuff, pick your favorite five, all that jazz, not anymore. 
this formula, y equals mx plus b, where the m stands for the slope and the b stands for the y-intercept. You know those two things? You substitute them in, you're done. If you couldn't hear it, it's not my fingers. So, this is, this is going to be huge. I'm going to save you so much time. No more table of values. Just from here, draw a line. So let's go from, we're going from the equation to drawing a line now. Remember the, the formula, y equals mx plus b. The value in front of the x is your m, or slope. The value after is your b, or y-intercept. Well, what is our slope here? You're thinking it's not zero. There actually is a number in front of the x. It's an imaginary one. And the y-intercept is the leftover thing the plus 3. So the y-intercept is plus 3. The slope is this imaginary 1. Now remember 1. How do we get the 1? Remember the slope you get by doing the rise over the run. So it actually technically was 1 over 1. Any whole number is a fraction is 1 over 1, right? Or it was over 1. So based on these two things, we can graph the line. So what I would do is start with the y-intercept and put a dot at plus 3. So we put a dot at plus 3. And then from there, there's no negative sign in front of this 1. It's just a positive 1. That means it's going to be a positive slope. It's going to lean this way. We go up 1 over to the right 1. Up 1 over to the right 1. Don't need three dots, but that's good enough. Let's view, zoom in, so you can get a better look at that. Up one over one, up one over one. And you can keep doing it over and over and over again, but only need a couple dots. And there is our line. I'm not going to draw the... That is y equals x plus 3. <clears throat> the number in front means the slope plus 3 means a y-intercept, plus 3, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, rise over run, rise 1 over 1, run, done. No need for a table of values. Picking the favorite 5, it's finished. Isn't this amazing? Okay, how about this? y equals negative 2x plus 1. Remember, our general formula, y equals mx plus b. The m tells us the slope. So the slope here is negative 2. Remember, it has to, it, the slope is rise over runs. What you should always do is take the number that is in front of the x and turn it into a fraction. So what is negative 2 as a fraction? Well, remember, any number, any whole number as a fraction is over 1. So the slope is negative 2 over 1. And the plus 1 gives us the y-intercept plus 1. Where b tells us the y-intercept. Okay, so how do you do this? Put a dot at plus 1. Always start with the y-intercept. In this case, we've got a negative 2. So instead of rise over run, it's kind of like... What's the opposite of rise? Like sink over run? down over, I don't know. So from that plus 1, we're going to go down 2 over, it's always to the right 1, so we're going to go down 2 over to the right 1 because of that negative sign. So from here we're going to go 1, 2 over 1, 1, 2 over 1. And there we have, let's zoom in a little bit, our three dots. I only really need two because they're all straight lines, if you haven't noticed. Um, and there is our oh, ugly, sloppy looking line. You should use a ruler. Don't do what I don't do what I do. There it is. It crosses at two, and if you were to do the triangle for the slope, it went down two over 1, negative 2 over 1. 
That's what it is. Well, y equals negative 2x plus 1. All right. What if we have this? Now, normally, something like this would make you cry, wouldn't it? You think, oh my god, it's a fraction. I have to use a table of values, and i got to go like negative 2 times a half and all this. But with this method, this y equals mx plus b method, fractions are actually easier than the other ones, the whole numbers. Where the formula is y equals mx plus b. Go away, go away, go away. Okay. So the number in front of the x, the number in front of the x tells you the slope. The number after tells you the y-intercept. So the slope is going to be positive 1 over 2, which means we're going to go up 1 over 2. That's not too hard. So the, the fraction part is easy. It tells you exactly in which direction to go. There's no need to convert it over 1 and that kind of stuff. And the y-intercept is positive 4. So we start from positive 4. We find positive 4 right there. Let's zoom in more. And we're going to go to the slope up 1 over 2. 1 half is the slope. So again, the y-intercept was positive 4. So we're going to go up 1 over 2. Let's do it again. Up 1 over 2. So half, it's, it's a small number. The slope, you notice, is not very steep. It's pretty shallow. And so our line will look like the ugly line. Like that. There, that is the line for y equals 1 half x plus 4. You're probably thinking, why didn't this guy tell me about this stuff before? What do we have to do with the table of value stuff? Eh, you know, you don't appreciate a shortcut until you walk the long way. Now, this would be ugly normally with a table of values. y equals negative 3 fourths x minus 6. But with this y equals mx plus b method, it's so easy. There's the slope. There's the slope. The slope is negative 3 over 4. By the way, if you notice in fractions, rational numbers, then the negative sign always belongs to the numerator. And then the y-intercept is what? Well, this could be is 6, negative 6. So, first thing, find the y-intercept. Put a dot at the negative 6. That's where it crosses the y-axis. And from there, we're going to go down 3 over to the right 4. It's always to the right. The run is always to the right. The up or down depends on the negative sign. Because it's negative sign, we're going to go down 3 over 4. Always to the right 4. Always, always, always. So here's our thing. We're going to go down 3 over 4. So from our y-intercept, we're going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, dot. Um, don't need to go further down, because they're all straight lines in this grade. So that's all you need are two dots. There you are. That is the graph for y equals negative 3 fourths x minus 6. Okay. How about this? y equals 3x. How do you graph that? It's not y equals 3, which, yes, would be a horizontal line. It's y equals 3x. So we have a y and an x. Well, let's see how our formula looks matching up to this. y equals mx plus b. Obviously, our m is this, the 3, so that means our slope is... 3. Remember, take any whole number for the slope and put it as a fraction. 3 is a fraction. is 3 over 1. 
So that means we're going to go up 3 over to the right 1. From what? It doesn't have a plus b. It doesn't have a y-intercept here. Well, what's here? It's like a plus 0. So what does that tell us about the y-intercept? The y-intercept is 0. So where do we put our dot to start off? At 0. And the slope from there is up 3 over to the right 1. Up 3, 1, 2, 3, over to the right 1. Let's do it again. 1, 2, 3, over to the right 1. And we can draw our line. Lie. Ew, ugly. Please use a ruler if you're doing this. But it's pretty a steep line. And it goes through 0 as your x axis. That is y equals 3x y equals 3x looks like that. No need for a table of values. All right. Almost done. What about y equals 6? So this is different. This, there's no x value here. So when you have that, you should remember from the horizontal and vertical lines lesson, that's just you find 6 on the y-axis, and you draw a line straight across. Because when you look at this, y equals mx plus b. There's no x value, so the slope, well, there is no slope. And all you have is a y-intercept, positive 6. Which is what we have there. Okay, so you put a dot at positive 6, and there's no up 1 over 1 is just, yeah, it's just the flat line. Okay, anyways, hope you enjoyed that little shortcut there. Skill testing questions, um, I'll zoom in, but you, I would like you to go from these lines, and the red line and the green line, and give me the equation for each. I'll give you a hint, we're going to start with y equals, y equals, so I'll zoom in even further so you can pause that and then write the information down. Okay. You zoom in even further if you need to. Okay. So give the equation of the red and the green line. And then on a, another graph, on the same graph, if you could graph and label these lines using the y equals mx plus b method, don't use the table of values method. Use this new method, the quick method, the trick method. <coughs> Show what the, what the lines of these two graphs look like. That is it. Talk to you later. Bye.